Alright, another day of working on the engine. Yes, hopefully today is the day that we put it back in there. Super exciting, especially that there's a bit of a storm coming. Probably won't be running, but... So, I am putting some Lucas. It's like some sort of really thick oil thing. This. And I'm gonna be putting it inside the cylinder. Oiling it up before we put the pistons in. Because I've got the small hands. <laughs> you're gonna wanna start at the very back, at the very bottom, or you're gonna end up with oil all over your hands. It's like snotty oil, really thick consistency, so it's gonna it's gonna be our assembly oil essentially. You really wanna make sure all this goes back together the same way. We actually had our labels a little bit mixed up, but we knew that this bearing cap goes with sorry this this rod cap went with this rod and the only thing that we kind of messed up was the direction we thought that this was it was labeled to go that way which it actually has to go this way because the little notches should be on the same side and as well as there's writing here so that kind of uh, there's a four numbers so those go together so that's for sure the, the right way that it's meant to go so now I'm just going to take out these bearings. We're going to clean up any uh, extra like grime and stuff that's around them. And then we're going to pop in our brand new bearings here and oil everything up and get it inside the piston. So I think I've seen people yeah, just you slide it out towards the notch. And then it should come right up. There we go. Some black oil. Going into surgery mode. All right, I'm gonna oil up everything a little bit here. Stuff's like snot, makes a bit of a mess. As you can see, our dining table is now fully occupied by engine parts. Those little bearings are $23 for our Yanmar 2GM wow. for the set. Are they stuck? Ah, there we go. They were a little stuck actually. That doesn't look so nice actually. Weird. At least the main face is pretty clean. Um, maybe we should give these a quick clean. Okay. Alright, let's spread some of this oil around here. Alright. So we're going to put the notch end in first here. There we go. And push this other end. There we go. Make sure it's nice and flush. And that's one bearing done. And I will put uh, a little bit of oil in there before I assemble it and get it all cleaned up. Or get it all oiled up, lubed up. So we got all the parts facing the front, the F facing me, this uh, is the front over here, I, we had marked it before, and this has a little C on it where the where it faces the front. Yeah, there we go. Aha, so it goes in one way. Maybe it's just a little looser on the other side. Sliding her through. And you stop at the little ring groove here, and then we put our little snap rings in. And this one is the front one. Alright, so this is the little retainer. It goes inside there. I found a pair of needle nose pliers. Seems to work pretty good. So we squeeze it, get it in the little groove, and let it expand. And that's it. Now we do the other side. Probably not necessary since we already oiled up the cylinder walls, but I like I'm liking keeping everything oily so it all slides nice. So I got this all oiled up and I got the rings at 120 degrees, so the oil rings here. The other one is actually it turned a little bit on me. But yeah, we have oil ring here. Uh, around here is our second ring and up here should be the first ring there we go yeah so one two and three they're all facing different directions all right now we're going to use this ring expander here I'll try to get it right in there 
over top of all the How rings. How do we do this with the camera? So we have it just above the rings, and now I do uh, the other way. Nope. All right. hmm. Two hand thing again, I think. Yeah. Anyway, you turn it until it crimps crimps down on these rings, and then we will show you what goes on next. So this compression tool is a piece of junk. It does not work like it's meant to. And it's basically this only, the only job of this tool is to do this one job and it doesn't do it well. So I'm not highly recommending this at all. But we're going to try to make this work. It, it doesn't even want to compress the rings enough so that we can actually fit this tool inside the cylinder. So I'm just going to bump it up against this, uh, the, the cylinder and see if we can tap the cylinder with the rings inside. Hopefully this works and we don't break any rings or anything like that. But yeah, really not happy with this tool. I've also got some paper towel here wrapped around the end of the rod because I don't want to scratch the cylinder walls when I put it in. So hopefully it doesn't get all caught up in the crank. So since this tool is a complete piece of junk, don't buy this. It does nothing, it does not work. The gap is way too thick and it's just all around garbage. We're trying to make one out of some old cutting board and a hose clamp. So hopefully that works because I'm really ready to eat lunch. I'm hungry. Well, it seems like this is sort of working. Uh, we've got plastic cut for the circumference of the cylinder and Alex is just tightening up the hose clamp. The nice thing about this setup too is that because it's clear plastic you can make sure that the piston ring gaps aren't changing on you. I can't believe how much time it's taking just to get these piston rings compressed and into the cylinder. Okay, so just a little bit, eh? Yes. So yeah, you can make you can double check as you're compressing it if the actual piston rings are have the gaps at 120 degrees roughly because it seems like while you compress them it they kind of shift a little bit. Okay, let's see. So you can tighten it up a little bit but you want to put the plastic like right up against the the edge of the plastic right up against the, the clamp. This is pretty much the position it's going to be in. Let's see how this goes. Tighten it right up. Don't worry, I'm gonna do it with my left hand. Just wanna make sure we're really on plastic everywhere. Right, fingers crossed this makeshift thing works. Um, yeah, we got the crank on the bottom side. We've turned this so that the crank underneath is further towards the oil pan so that the connecting rod doesn't smash against it. And now we're going to try to push it in. But I think it's not going to work. I don't want to push too hard and break the oil ring. So really like we're not having a good time here. Check. Our little tool fell off, but the piston is fully in. Finally! Oh man, that was like three, over two hours of fiddling with this to try to get it to work. But now we got a system, I think, and we should be able to get the other one in. Piston number two. Hopefully it takes us less time than the other one because the other one took what four hours. <laughs> I'm gonna loosen this off just a little bit because I think it's too tight when you crank it right down. So I've seen a video of somebody just pushing it with their thumbs, but I don't know. Maybe the compression, uh, the rings are tighter on this one. But essentially, this is the only way I can get it to actually go in. Just light taps, and it slowly makes its way in
That's in. Woo. So we're trying to line the journal and the crank. I'm just gonna do little taps until it gets closer to you and then you tell me when I need to slow down. So before we put the journals back together and put the cap on the connecting rods, we want to check our oil clearance for the actual uh, rod caps and the bearings. So we found it here in the manual, it comes up connecting rod, journal oil clearance. And it seems like in millimeters it's 0.028 to 0 0.06, sorry, 0 0.086. And it seems like our plastic, plastic gauge here, which is like a wax that we're going to put in between to see what the clearance is, is right near that range. It's not quite as wide, so it's 0.25, so it would be if we measure it and it's you know below that range then we have too tight of a clearance to 0.76 which again is kind of in the middle of the range or so or closer to the higher end of the range so if we measure that then we might have to switch to the red one which goes up to 0.125 so we're going to use the, these gauges to give us a rough idea of our oil clearance so as you can see there's a little green piece of wax sort of thing so i'm just going to cut it the width of the journal roughly which is somewhere here and then I take this little thing and I just place it inside the journal or on the journal rather Other one. number four all right there we go all right so the little plastic gauge is in between the connecting rod cap. Now I'm just hand tightening the bolts and then we're going to torque them down and then see how thick that wax gets compressed to and that's going to tell us our clearance. I'm trying to see the calibration of this this torque wrench and it really doesn't seem to be within the right calibration so this is a foot away from here so we should have 30 foot pounds of torque but we have 32.6 and the reading actually seems to be changing quite a bit depending on what we're doing here so let's see so this one came up pretty darn close to 30 pounds so let's try again right at the right mark and I'll try not to jerk it too much 31 so I mean it's pretty close actually now we're looking for the connecting rod bolts and looking under GM and it's 18.1 foot pounds so we're gonna try that we're gonna tighten them up and then take them back off and check the thickness of this plastic gauge and then once we squeeze it down we cut a little piece of this off we take off the cap and we measure it against the the gauge here to find out how much clearance we have all right we're just torquing stuff down i'm just going to tighten them both somewhat hand tight a little bit past hand tight we're just loosening everything back up so we can check our clearances so i don't know if you can see but the the markings are roughly between 0 0.038 and over on the other side it's a little thicker in one little spot just under it's probably close to 0 0.03 roughly so I think we're within spec but it doesn't look like the journal is completely perfectly even from one side to the other which I guess isn't ideal but I think it'll still work so brake cleaner cleans really well the wax residue that's left by the little ruler thing and seems like both of our bearings are within specs for our engine which is awesome putting the second connecting rod cap on i got it all lubed up with the new bearings in there nice and shiny and like alex said we're all good for spec so we're just going to slap these in then put the oil filter or the oil screen back at the bottom and put the oil pan back on so that means the engine's ready to go back over there Aha. 
Alright, we're just checking to make sure there's good clearance around everything and it's not binding up on anything. Using the crank to spin the engine. There's so much more compression compared to before. We could spin the pulleys, the crank so easily because, well, we had no compression. <laughs> but now it's actually really hard, which made us a little bit worried, but it seems like it's supposed to be that way. So we think. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not finding it, it's not grabbing on anything. It's smooth once I get it going, but to get it started, it feels like it's stuck on there really good. And I think it's also from the Lucas oil that we're using. So once you get it moving, it, it turns fine.